Okay, so let's get started here. All right, um, Alex, would you do me a favor and um, mute everybody? Um, just sure. so you know, just um, helps us so that we don't have any feedback or anything on um, the chat but, or on the webinar today. But feel free if you have any questions as we go along, um, you can um, type them right in the chat box. We'll be stopping um, periodically throughout the presentation today to answer questions along the way. And we'll also have some time at the end to um, answer any questions that you might have. Um, again, for those of you who might not know us, my name is Kristen Bob. I am the Just Say Yes to Fruits and Vegetables Nutrition Educator. And Alex is our... Um, Nutrition, new nutrition resource manager, just in case any of you haven't um, met us. So welcome uh, to our Holidays Around the World um, webinar today. Um, we put together um, this webinar as kind of a continuation um, from last year's series um, of webinars revolving around um, cultural, cultural foods and um, foods that you could bring into your pantries and stuff to help the different cultures that come with come in. So today, um, what to expect, um, we are going to cover, like I said, I already started already, but we're going to cover a little bit more about um, what does this webinar have to do with us? How does it um, help us and in, in, in what ways does it help us? We're going to go through some of um, the maybe more pop, more common, but less known um, holidays throughout different um, traditions and cultures um, that we may see. And we're going to talk about the Middle Eastern Islamic holidays, Jewish holidays, Asian holidays, Latino holidays. And um, I didn't throw in there, but um, uh, African-American holidays. Um, and then at the end, um, we're going to um, talk about some tools that you can have available for you um, to help um, in any way. I do want to put a disclaimer out there. Um, Alex and I uh, did have do have some problems with some of our pronunciation of some of the words. Um, so bear with us for that. We apologize in advance uh, for any mess ups we have with pronunciation. Um, also, too, just so you guys know, there are so many different holidays out there. The reason we put together this webinar is so that we have the chance to um, talk about holidays outside of our typical Christmas or Thanksgiving, where um, the common um, conversations we have are the Christmas baskets or the Thanksgiving baskets that we put together every year, uh, but we want to um, touch base on some of the other holidays um, and the foods, more specifically the foods around those holidays, so that if you have a particular um, culture that is represented in your um, food pantry, soup kitchen, whatever your program may be, it may be something that you want to highlight or um, create a food drive around or create a holiday basket around um, to where it doesn't just have to be the Christmas basket or the Thanksgiving basket. And it doesn't have to be the foods that are um, common in what we may consider our Christmas and Thanksgiving baskets. So some of the uh, cultures that we'll talk about are religious based. Some of them are not. Um, but we'll just highlight what they are, um, what um, are some of the basic uh, traditions around those holidays, and then um, some of the foods of those holidays. We're not going to delve too deep into um, the food, specific foods of the culture, because we did that last year in the culturally relevant food series, um, but we will go into that. So... I'm going to um, kick this over to Alex, and he's going to start with the Middle Eastern and his Islamic holidays. Alex? 
Alex, you have to unmute. You're muted, Alex. Well, that would that would help. <laughs> I apologize. Um, so I'm just going to piggyback off what Kristen said real quick. Um, so the purpose of this workshop is to educate agencies about the different cultures that you could experience um, in your pantries, your food pantries, your soup kitchens, uh, emergency shelters, what have you. Um, and just kind of give you some insights on the holidays you may experience and build rapport with the people that you're serving. Um, so we'll just ju jump right into it here. You muted again, Alex. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Um, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. All right. So first on the list is Ramadan. Um, so this is an Islamic holiday that represents a month of fasting, increased worship, and self-discipline. During this time, the only time food is eaten is very early in the morning and at sunset. Uh, the misconception with Ramadan is they don't eat for the entire month. That is inaccurate. They do eat food. It's just um, at certain parts of the day. So does anyone know, and you can type it in the group chat if you'd like to, um, why are they fasting during Ramadan? Does anyone know the reason behind that? Give you a little bit. All right. Well, I will take it that no one knows and that is okay. So um, it's a way for Muslims to empathize with those who are, who are less fortunate. Um, by experiencing hunger and thirst, you can understand the struggles of those who do not have food to eat or water to drink or anything to drink for that matter. So it's kind of impactful and um, relatable to our industry. Um, so it is, it's on the ninth month of the Islamic calendar, which is based on a 12 month lunar year of 354 days. Uh, next year, it'll be on March 10th through April 9th. Um, so just a side note, people practicing Ramadan may not want to eat certain foods at your food pantry. If you are giving out food samples, you, they will most likely not accept it depending on the time of day it is. Um, and we must understand this is based on religious practices and to not judge them um, based on that. Um, so typical foods that uh, Muslims tend to eat year round, or they do not eat year round, rather, um, are pork and alcohol. Those are the two main ones that they will not consume based on their religious practices. Um, this also includes meats that are not slaughtered according to Islamic law and any sweets that can contain alcohol, such as vanilla extract. So any sweets, um, well, I would say most sweets contain vanilla extract or a good majority of them. So if they do not eat sweets, that is, that is why it, they, they don't want to risk having alcohol in anything they consume. Um, so yeah, we're still on the same slide. So Sahari is, is the meal that is eaten first thing in the morning. That's what they call it before they fast. There are no restrictions on what they can have at this meal, but it's suggested that they have fruit and vegetables and some egg, cheese, and yogurt to stay full before the day starts. Um, iftar is eaten after sunset. That's, the, that's what it's called. Um, and this time they replenish their body after fasting all day. So they're normally very hungry. Um, and the same type of foods that are normally in, which include fruits, vegetables, um, nuts, beans, meat, dairy, that kind of thing. And some popular spices that are in are cumin, nutmeg, black pepper, and turmeric. So we have Eid al fitr I believe that's how you pronounce it. So this, this is what marks the end of Ramadan um, after the month of fasting, and it's a time of reflection for them. Um, it lasts three days, and the purpose of the festival is to promote brotherhood and bring oneself back to the normal course of life after a month of religious devotion and abstaining from food or drink. Um, some popular meals that are eaten are uh, sheer karma, which is a rich creamy pudding made with vermicelli, which is like a long pasta. You can kind of see in that picture that that's that's what sheer um, sheer karma is. Um, and it's also made with milk, dates, nuts, dry fruit, sugar, and ghee. Um, another popular food is biryani, which is a dish that includes rice, 
with either lamb, chicken, fish, or vegetables. Again, no pork. Um, oh, and some, some spices used is uh, cardamom and saffron. On to the next one, um, Eid al-Adha, which is the largest of the two main holidays celebrated in Islam. It honors the willingness of Abraham to sacrifice his son as an act of obedience to God's command. Real quick, just going to flip my page here. Uh, Korbani meat distribution. This one's really interesting. Um, so <clears throat> during the celebration, they have um, they have a choice of meat. It's usually camel, cow, or goat. And they divide the meat into three equal portions. One of them goes to the Kubani performer. So the, the person performing the ceremony and cutting the meat. Um, the other third goes to family and friends. And the last third goes to the poor. Um, and another popular meal to eat is, is mandi. Uh, it consists mainly of meat and rice with a special blend of spices, which are turmeric, ginger, garlic, tomato paste, and lime. There's a picture of it over there to the right. That's kind of what it looks like. And now we get into Judaism. Does anyone have any questions on Islamic culture, food culture slash holidays? Right. If not, we will move on here. So Hanukkah, probably the most popular holiday um, in the, the Judaism culture. Uh, so just some context of what Hanukkah is. Um, so in 167 BC, the Maccabees led a band of Jews in a successful battle against the accompanying Syrian Greeks who had desecrated the, the second temple's eternal light. Miraculously, one day's supply of oil lasted eight days until more could be found. The Hanukkah menorah is lit for eight nights to celebrate that miracle. Um, as you probably have seen pictures of the eight candles lit, that's kind of the background behind that. Um, so this year it's on December 7th through December 15th. Some popular foods that are eaten during this time, brisket, um, which is a part of the cattle, on um, latkes, which is, it's, it's essentially a potato pancake, which is the picture to the right. It's, it's very good. I've had it before. It's delicious. Um, kugel, which is an egg noodle casserole. And uh, suffered and yawn. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Um, which is a round jelly donut. They're pretty popular as well. Um, and then Hanukkah gelt, which is chocolate coins, which I'm sure we've all had chocolate coins in our um, Christmas stocking. Um, so on to the next. Next is Passover, another very popular holiday within Judaism. Um, it is a holiday commemorating the Hebrews' liberation from slavery in Egypt and the passing over of the forces of destruction or the sparing of the firstborn of Israelis when the Lord smote the land of Egypt on eve of the Exodus. So this year, that would be on April 22nd to the 30th. On these seven or eight days, all leave-in, which is essentially yeast, uh, whether in bread or other mixture, is prohibited. So only unleavened bread, called matzo, is eaten. And that would be a picture right there. They're like, kind of like crackers. Um, I've also had those before. They're very, very good. Um, so foods eaten during this time, popular ones anyway, poached fish dumplings, matzo ball soup, brisket or roast chicken, a stew of carrots and prunes, sometimes including potatoes or sweet potatoes. Um, some spices used is anise, which is a licorice type taste, carway, it's got like some sort of a nutty flavor to it, coriander, cumin, dill seeds, phenol seeds, and mustard. So we're moving right along here. Next up is the Asian holidays. Uh, does anyone have any questions on Judaism? Yes. <laughs> sure, of course. What about Yom Kippur and um, Rosh Hashanah? Yes. Yeah, so um, I, I did not look into that. I, I again, there's a lot. There's a lot of holidays that go into Judaism. Um, I probably could have added a little bit more, but um, we're covering a lot. So if you'd like to share, you know, some, some insight on what you've experienced with those holidays, you're more than welcome to.
Uh, I just know that Yom Kippur is like their highest holy day. So it's probably one. I don't know everything about it. It's a day of atonement. Um, if there yeah. any anyone here who celebrates, maybe they could add to it because I think that that's a key holiday, like the most important one. Really? Okay. All right. Well, that's noted. And, um, you know, the next time we do this, I will definitely add that in there. Um, do you know what time of year it is? What time of year it's celebrated? I think it was like Monday. <laughs> oh, wow. Really? Okay. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. And um, again, the, the next time we do this, I'll, you know, probably add a slide on that. Um, you know so, so thank you. I do have a little something on Yom Kippur I can throw in there for you. Um, it is like, um, I think there was Sally talking and said it is the Day of Atonement, um, day of the lunar year, um, when um, they seek to expedite their sins and achieve reconciliation with um, God. Uh, so it's it concludes um, the 10 days of repentance that begin with Rosh Hashanah. So Rosh Hashanah is um, the Jewish New Year, um, and that's the very first day. So um, Yom Kippur completes that on the 10th day. So it's the day of um, reconciliation and forgiveness of sins um, and that sort of thing. Um, I, I'm not sure 100% what um, uh, Yom Kippur is also observed by um, abstaining from food and drink. So um, it is a um, fasting day. And that's, that's all I have for that right now for Yom Kippur. Thank you, Kristen. I appreciate yes. it. No yeah, problem. So so that is definitely something to, to make aware. Um, and again, I'll, I'll look into it for next time. Um, you know, th there are holidays where people come in and, you know, they, they could need the food, but they're not, they're, they're in a fasting period for religious purposes. So it's always good to uh, note that and to not take offense to that. So um, thank you, Kristen. I appreciate it. So we're going to move on to uh, Asian holidays. Uh, when I lived in New York City, the, there was a lot of um, Asian population there, and it was really interesting learning about this. So um, we'll move on to this. So Chinese New Year, super popular one, um, very similar to our New Year, actually. Um, so the first day of the Chinese New Year begins on the new moon that appears between January 21st and February 20th. This year will be on February 10th. Um, so just like us, the festival that celebrates the beginning of the new year on the traditional lunar solar Chinese calendar. So instead of the first of the year, based on our calendar, it's based on the lunar solar, solar Chinese calendar. Um, so some foods that they eat during this time um, are dumplings, spring rolls, sweet, ball ro sweet rice balls, which are to the right, that picture right there, um, noodles, fish, steamed chicken, fruits, and vegetables. Um, <clears throat> some spices, uh, fino, which is a member of the carrot family, cinnamon, star anise, pepper, and cloves. Um, next on the list, Labor Thanksgiving Day. So difference from us is we watch football and eat turkey on Thanksgiving, and this is not the case in Asian culture. They actually don't usually eat turkey at all, so... Um, it is celebrated on the, the third Thursday of November, no matter the date. Um, Japanese, Japanese Thanksgiving always falls on the 23rd of November, or if this is a Sunday, the following Monday. Um, to ex the purpose of this is to express gratitude to one another for work, work done throughout the year, and for the fruits of, of uh, those labors. So specific foods eaten during this time, traditional meal of fish, rice, tea, and their close family. So this is a very family-driven holiday. Um, again, no turkey, and it's usually uh, during this time, you know, they'll go out and get, um, you know, new attire, new clothes, like things like that, kind of just celebrate and spend time with each other. So some, uh, some popular spices used, wasabi, which I'm sure we've all had wasabi before. It's 
essentially a, a Japanese horseradish, super spicy. Katsubushi, which is a smoked fermented skipjack tuna. Ryu, which is a chili oil. And karashi, which is a spicy mustard. Um, oh, yeah. For context, guys. Um, so I ended up, Asia is a giant continent, right? So I just try to pick the three main ones, which is China, Japan, and Korea. There's, again, plenty more. We could go on for days um, in the continent of Asia. So I just wanted to pick um, the main ones that I thought fit. And if you have any opinion on that, you can always, you know, um, put it in the chat or, or speak or whatever. So next one, we're going to go to Korea. Uh, Chisuak, I believe that's how you pronounce that. So this year, this holiday falls on Thursday, September 19th, but the, the holiday period lasts three days in total, including the day before and after Chisuak. Um, so this is a Korean Thanksgiving, um, very similar to Japan in the sense that it's a traditional holiday where people go back to see their, um, their hometowns to show appreciation for the fall food. So um, also very similar foods are eaten during that time. Um, so specific foods eaten are Song Pion, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, which is a half moon rice cake. Uh, Jap Chai, which is a stir fry glass noodle and vegetable and Bulgogi, which is a marinated beef. Um, so <clears throat> the half moon rice cake is actually to the right. They look like little pockets of, uh, they look like dumplings almost, but they're sweet. Um, Kristen said she saw a video of, um, them opening it, right. And they, they don't know what's, what's in it. Like it was like, um, you know, it was a surprise whenever they bit into it to see like what they would get. Um, so some spices used during this, this time are Korean chili powder, roasted sesame seeds, ground black pepper, soy sauce, and cooking wine. Um, so we're going to move on to the next thing. And Kristen will be taking over from here. Does anyone have any questions, um, comments? You know, you're more than welcome to chime in at any time, give some input, some critique. All right. Um, so we are talking the Hispanic and Latino um, cultures right now. Um, so when I um, chose to look into this, there are so many avenues. It encompasses a lot of um, area. So this is going to be very generalized, but we are looking at uh, Mexico, South America, and Spain, and trying to um, decipher some of the um, traditions from all over. A lot of it does mesh and mingle. There are some traditions that are very um, specific to certain um, countries um, and certain cultures within those countries as well. Um, but as far as the Spanish-speaking um, countries go, they do very much um, revolve around um, Catholicism and the Catholic holidays. So um, just like um, a lot of cultures within the United States, Spanish-speaking um, cultures do celebrate Christmas. Um, so the Christmas season starts differently in different countries. Um, in Spain, they start celebrating on December 8th, um, Mexico, December 16th, South America, December 4th. Um, and like I said, it all follows the basic Catholic traditions. Um, except for Christmas, the majority of the gift giving is um, reserved for Three Kings Day, which is something that we'll, we'll talk about um, moving forward. Um, but some of the pictures that you'll see here are some of the dishes that are very common um, throughout the um, Christmas season um, because it isn't just one day they celebrate um, uh, the Christmas season over multiple days. One of the dishes um, that you'll find is a pozole, which is the top dish, which um, is a hominy-based dish, which is kind of like a bean or a legume-based um, dish. Also, the Ensalada de Noche Buena, which is a fruit salad, 
um, and it is um, made up differently in different um, cultures, but it is a basic fruit salad that is served over a lot of the holidays. Um, the holiday, uh, a lot of these dishes too, you're going to find um, repeated throughout a lot of the um, a lot of the um, holidays. I'm sorry, the dishes are um, repeated throughout the different holidays. So that's Christmas. Um, if you will go to the next slide, um, Alex, this next one, um, this next slide has a couple of other um, based dishes. Lentils with treeso, sopa de galettes, which is a soup with um, like little tiny meatballs in it. Bacal, I, I butcher this one every time. Bacal, bacchialo is a codfish, um, salted codfish dish um, cooked with um, tomatoes and green olives. And the other one in entremet say is it's like a charcuterie board of um, meats and cheeses and different appetizery um, pickings that um, they put out um, as like little snacks throughout the day at, at different um, celebrations. Okay, Alex. So for New Year's, again, just like with in, in um, the United States, New Year's is um, celebrated um, and it customarily begins with a big evening meal um, in the hours leading up to the main event. Um, and again, a, a lot of the holiday dishes are repeated from Christmas, um, but many of the traditions re revolve around bringing luck and prosperity into the new year. Um, so the next one, Alex. So some of the um, New Year's traditions, uh, one of them being when the clock strikes midnight, um, it's tradition to eat 12 green grapes and um, one right after the other, one for each toll of the bell. Um, and they say that if you manage to eat them all, you'll supposedly get good luck uh, throughout the year. Um, another tradition um, in the, um, Spanish speaking population are lentils. Uh, lentils are an important staple, again, to bring, said to bring prosperity and good fortune to those who eat them. Um, uh, um, most uh, meals or holiday celebrations have um, some sort of a Spanish uh, lentil soup. Or um, another thing that they will do is take dried lentils and carry them around in their pocket with them into the new year um, so that they have that prosperity and good fortune coming into the year. All right. Um, so one of the holidays that I found um, exciting to learn about was this uh, Three Kings Day, which is Epiphany. Um, and it's the day the three wise men found the newborn Jesus Christ after following the star through the desert for 12 days after his birth. So a lot of um, uh, Christian holidays, Catholic, um, Catholic um, have Christmas as um, the big day when Jesus was born. But it took 12 days after his birth for uh, the wise men to um, come see Jesus. So while it's not as important for English speaking Christians, um, Spain, Latin America, it's an important day. Um, and it's a lot of times um, the celebrations for Three Kings Day or, um, or Epiphany are um, a lot larger than a Christmas celebration. Um, so on Three Kings Day, children all over Spanish speaking world, they leave shoes by the door of their home at night. Um, so that the three kings will come and leave them presents. Uh, just like we leave milk and cookies for Santa Claus, um, the kids will leave salter and grass alongside their shoes for the camels that the, the uh, three kings ride on. Um, they do have their typical um, 
family meal, large meal, you having a lot of the, the dishes that we talked about, but one of the fun traditions that they do um, revolves around the baking and eating of a special treat known as the Rosca de Reyes or the Three Kings Bread or King's Cake. Um, it, it also goes by. Um, it's a sweet bread and when they bake the bread, they have a little um, baby doll that represents Jesus um, that they bake within the bread. And the bread, as you see in the picture, is baked into a circle. Um, and it's said that if you are the one who ends up with the baby Jesus doll when, on Three Kings Day when you're eating the, the bread, um, if you're the adult, you're obligated to host the, um, the, part, the next party, um, which... Um, uh, is February 2nd, Candlemas Day, or if you're a child that that gets the baby Jesus in your king's bread, you get a treat or a, a, an extra present or something along those lines. All right, next slide, Alex. Um, so one of, um, another one of the um, dishes that are common for Three Kings Day involve Piccadillo. Piccadillo, yeah, I think I'm saying that right. Um, and it's pretty much a Spanish word for leftovers or low, slow cooked meats. Um, a lot of times they're sauteed with onions, tomatoes, garlics, herbs. Um, and traditionally, this is the filling that um, fills tamales um, or enchiladas or is put into a casserole. Um, tamales are a common um, celebratory dish because they take um, and take a long time to put together and make. So sometimes it takes a long picadillo. Millie, did I say that right? Picadillo? Picadillo? Picadillo, I think. Picadillo. Picadillo. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm sorry <laughs> I'm butchering it. No, no, not at all. <laughs> it's a learning moment. Yes, thank you. Um, so it's used in many different ways um, and is really a rich, deep, um, flavorful um, addition to their, the Three Kings Day meal. Next slide, Alex. All right, so Easter, um, again, going in, in line with the Catholic holidays, Easter is one of the highest holy days of the year. Um, a lot of American families celebrate Easter with a ham or hard boiled eggs or deviled eggs or something like that. Um, Easter is the week leading up, or sorry, Easter is one of the highest holy days. Um, the week leading up to Easter is called Holy Week, um, and it involves solemn processions, prayers, masses, and other preparations for Jesus' rebirth. Um, so Lent and ho the Holy Week are times of meditation, repentance for the fa faults that have been committed, um, and it's a period of sacrifice where um, some may either completely fast um, at different parts without throughout Holy Week, um, or refrain from meat and or meat products, um, typically on Fridays during Lent. Um, so for Holy Week, Holy Week starts on Palm Sunday, um, and that's when um, they celebrate Jesus' entrance into the city of Jerusalem with the occasion of the, the Feast of Passover. Um, so again, just like Alex said um, at the beginning, um, when we say um, fasting, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are completely not eating for the entire week or the entire 40 days of Lent. Um, it just means that they refrain from eating um, certain foods. In um, this case, um, it's meat or meat products. So throughout Lent um, and Holy Week, a lot of the dishes are either vegetarian-based or seafood or fish-based um, meats or proteins. Um, so again, uh, during Lent, the main foods consist of fish, seafood, vegetables, legumes, um, and 
during um, Easter, Easter is the breaking of the fast and um, consists strongly of um, deep, rich meat dishes. Um, one of the pictures here, you see the povo and mole, and uh, that's turkey. Turkey is actually very common um, at Easter time in um, Spanish speaking cultures. Um, some of the other pictures, um, bacal, bac, bacalao, bac, I'm sorry, um, that's a codfish based um, soup. Um, and the one on the bottom, let me move my chat box here, I can't see that, sopa de ale. All right, uh, next slide. Uh, before we move on, does anybody have anything to add to that or to have any questions? All right, so um, our last uh, holiday celebration that we're gonna talk about um, is going to be Kwanzaa. And Kwanzaa is one of the non-religious based holidays. Um, it's derived from the phrase um, Matunda Ye, Ye Kwanzaa, which means first fruits in Swahili. Um, Kwanzaa was officially recognized as a holiday in the 1960s. Um, to empower and connect Black communities after the wake of the Watts riots. Uh, each family celebrates Kwanzaa in its own way, just like throughout all other cultures. Um, but celebrations often include songs and dance, African drums, storytelling, uh, poetry reading, and um, traditionally a large, um, a, a large meal. Um, Kwanzaa is seven days long, or seven nights long, rather, um, and the family gathers, and a child uh, lights one of the candles on the canera. It's a candle holder, very much like the menorah for Hanukkah, and um, each night that a candle is lit, they discuss one of the seven principles that um, make up Kwanzaa. Um, Kwanzaa's seven principles um, are unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. So each night they talk about one of those seven principles. Um, and the seven principles are values of African culture which contribute to building and reinforcing community among African Americans. Um, Kwanzaa also has seven basic symbols, which represents values and concepts reflective of African culture as well. Um, those symbols include the crops, so fruits, nuts, and vegetables, um, a placemat, an ear of corn, the seven candles, the candle holder, the unity cup, gifts. Um, so those are the seven um, symbols. Um, on uh, December 31st, which is actually, I believe, the sixth night of Kwanzaa, an African feast called the Kar Karuma um, is held. Um, um, and like I said, the feast um, is the big, the biggest meal out of Kwanzaa. So can you go to the next slide? Um, so the big feast, like I said, largest meal is eaten on the sixth night. Um, and it's usually brought to together by a single one pot super stew. Um, there are a lot of other side dishes as well, but the um, the one pot super stew is usually the big base um, meal. Um, and the stew is very based on the culture of the family. Um, the pictures that you see around this um, are the uh, some of the um, soup, soups or stews um, that are common throughout different cultures. There's a jambalaya, Thibodeauian, Philadelphian pepper pot stew, and a peanut stew. 
right? Um, other foods uh, that are predominantly highlighted um, are, um, of course, the first foods of the harvest um, in many African countries. So mango, pineapple, okra, oranges, eggplant, and yams. Um, the ear of corn that we talked about um, as one of the symbols is also a, um, oh, go back, go back, also a um, main dish and also black eyed peas and collard greens um, are eaten um, on this, during this feast um, to um, bring on good luck and good fortune as well. Um, so that's a little basis on Kwanzaa. Um, and it is celebrated, I didn't, don't know if I mentioned this, right around the same time as Christmas is. Um, so it can often be mistaken as a Christmas celebration, but it's not. Um, so what questions do you have for me on Kwanzaa? All right, can you go to the next slide, Alex? So tools to help us, um, like we, and like I said in the beginning, one of the things um, that we came up, we created through, um, based off of a huge study and a year long um, uh, um, there were surveys and studies and stuff last year, um, we created the culturally relevant food handouts. Um, you'll see just a snapshot of that in the picture what that is, is um, it's a packet of um, handouts that covers um, different cultures that throughout um, our service area. And um, some of the fruits, vegetables, dairy, proteins, spices, uh, grains um, that are used within these cultures, uh, we created these handouts so that they can be utilized as um, either um, handouts that you can reference for um, food drives if you're interested. Um, we, can, uh, we found out through the surveys and through um, our education that the cultures that um, come into your pantry are ever-changing. Um, we've had agencies talking about how um, one minute or for a couple of years are predominantly Hispanic culture, and then um, they might change to a predominantly Middle Eastern culture. So as the cultures change, we have to learn more about them, more about the foods that um, these families want um, that make them comfortable, that they're used to working with, and, um, used to eating and preparing. Um, so we came up with these handouts so that they can be referenced um, for foods that you may potentially want to bring into your pantries um, to help um, these cultures. Um, you can use those for the holidays as well, um, using referencing those sheets to um, create special holiday baskets, just like the Christmas and Thanksgiving baskets that are put together. Um, or like I said, again, for um, fundraisers or, or food drives, um, if you're looking to bring any of these um, specialized foods into your pantry. Um, the PowerPoint that we have today will be um, available to you. I believe we're gonna be putting it on the Regional Food Bank website um, under agency, um, what's the title? Agency, um, where you find all the other handouts and stuff. Um, I think there's an agency services tab or something in there. Um, you'll be able to have uh, the PowerPoint. Um, the culturally relevant food handouts are also available there for you too. Um, yes, Millie, the, the Caribbean people are, are usually a mixture of cultures. Um, and there are, um, handouts for the Caribbean um, cultures as well with the culturally relevant food handouts. Um, and also one of the best ways to find out which foods um, your families want, um, your guests want 
in the pantry or to ask them themselves, learn about their cultures. Um, I found going around with the Just Say Yes to Fruits and Vegetables um, nutrition education classes, I learned so much about the different cultures and the different foods that uh, people prepare in those classes alone. And it's so much fun to learn about them. So just talking with your guests and everything is a great drive to find what foods, um, which holidays are celebrated, which foods are cherished um, that you may want to be bringing into your pantries. Do you have anything to add, Alex? Um, I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think we pretty much covered everything um, at this point. I would say, you know, if you have any questions, of course, ask them. Um, you can yeah. either. What questions do you have for me, everybody? Hi, thank you so much for doing this. This was great. Um, I learned a lot about the different, you know, cultures out there and relevant uh, food for them. I just wanted to know, and I hope this isn't offensive or anything, but as the staff of the regional food bank, like, is it diverse where possibly the employees of different races can discuss culturally relevant foods? If not, is it possible for you guys to reach out to the different agencies so that people can talk about their culture and the foods that are appropriate? And yeah, I didn't see too much about West Indian food. I noticed like Latino food, like Latin food. Um, but thank you for putting Kwanzaa in there. Sure, absolutely, Tiffany. Um, so what happened last year with um, when we, developed the culturally relevant food handouts. We had a committee put together um, that was comprised of cultures from all over and um, food pantry representatives um, throughout different cultures as well um, so that we can create these sheets that do incorporate um, a lot of different cultures and their um, and like I said, the foods that they predominantly eat. And that's what drew those handouts. Um, so it wasn't um, solely food bank employees. It was actually made up of um, more people from our um, agencies and communities. Surveys were done throughout, um, throughout no. our service area that um, covered um, was actually a survey for the guests talking about their cultures. So that's where um, all these um, came into. Um, did, does that answer your question, Tiffany? Yeah, yeah. I, no, I was aware that the agencies were surveyed for this. I was talking okay. in regards to this particular webinar. Oh, this particular webinar? No, um, we didn't really, um, this was really, based more on um, education um, research that Alex and I did. Um, again, we know there were so many different um, cultures out there and I know there are so many different celebrations out there that we could have picked from, um, but we only had an hour or two uh, that was given to us to present this in. So the, it was so exciting and um, we could have dove in so much deeper, but we really want to do encompass as many different um, holidays as we could in the foods that were eaten in those holidays. Um, that unfortunately, with it being an hour, we did have to do some uh, compartmentalizing right. and squishing. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, yeah. Um, Stacy, do you have a question? Yeah, I was wondering, um, for us, when we're connecting with our clients and our customers, um, do you have like a pronunciation guide um, that folks can use just because I want to make sure that we're all pronouncing things correctly when we're communicating with our folks? Because I think that's a big piece of the dignity um, and compassion and respect piece of it. Is that possible? Um, I am not sure what we have. 
have as far as um, any kind of pronunciation assistance. I can check with Catherine on that. I know that there is a translation app that she um, has used and promoted and stuff like that. And I know that's a translation, but I don't know as far as um, pronunciation, pronunciation, um, if that assists with that. So let me reach out to the member services team um, to see about that when I get back to you. Um, Sally says she believes Google can help with this too in the chat. I, I, I will also say I used Google to um, try to pronounce some, some of the words um, that I didn't know how to say. So um, Google, I, I think it, you can use it on the app and also the browser. You just put in the word and you put pr pronunciation and it will literally say it out loud to you. And then it gives you like the, the acronyms, you know, like spaced out so you can pronounce it out loud to yourself, if, if that makes sense. Um, because I totally agree with that for sure. Does, uh, does anyone have any other questions or, and, and like Kristen was, was saying too, and I don't want to dwell on it, but it, you know, there's like so many different cultures and to cram it in an hour is just like absurd, right? There's just no way that we could do it. I, I try, we tried our best on it and, you know, this is our first time doing it. So hopefully, um, the next time we can get feedback from you guys and maybe we can elaborate on some things that you guys are seeing in your communities or for things that you personally think that we should be including. And, and um, you know, it's all about improving the next time. And we, we appreciate your feedback for sure. And um, yeah. Also um, one other thing, if you guys haven't put your name and agency in the chat, if you could do that just so I can mark it off on my attendance list to make sure you guys were here. And um, you know, you guys are all more than welcome to email either Christian, Kristen or I, and we will answer any questions that you have, any feedback that you have. And uh, again, it'll be on the website. So you'll be able to use it there as well. I have my email in the uh, chat box for you guys, if anybody um, was looking for it. I will also put mine. So well, thank you all so much. Um, again, reach out to us if you have any questions, um, if you um, uh, have any other comments or anything like that regarding um, any of the um, holidays and traditions that we talked about. Um, and thank you for joining us. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you guys found uh, this helpful and useful and in, as interesting as we did um, and enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, enjoy, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. I'm going to linger for a little bit to get attendance. So if anyone has any questions, you know, I'll, I'll be sticking around for a little bit. So thank you thank so you. much. Of course, yeah, of course. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. It was great. Thank you.